What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2015 Kia Soul manual. Up front is a 1.6 liter inline four. Down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am excited to be driving this here Kia Soul as you could probably imagine because it is a manual. But the second reason I'm excited is because I'm out here in Los Angeles, California and Last time I was out here in LA, I reviewed another Kia Soul, but when I got home, the footage corrupted and that review never came out. So fingers crossed that I could finally release a Los Angeles County Kia Soul review. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 1.6 liter Gamma inline four under the hood. Well, it makes 130 horsepower, which isn't anything crazy. And Kia and Hyundai have used this engine in tons and tons of vehicles. So it is a pretty common engine, nothing really to write home about. But let's talk about that six speed manual. What is it like to drive a Kia Soul with a stick? Well, it's actually very, very nice. The clutch is nice and light. The shifter throw, really good. I've driven a Kia Forte GT in manual, and it feels very, very similar to that. It's very direct. Clutch feels good, and it's nice, easy, and light engagement. If you want to buy a car and you're looking to learn how to drive manual, the Kia Soul is fantastic. And that's really the reason I wanted to make this video is just if you are looking to learn stick shift or you want a stick shift car, now you can broaden your search by at least one more car learning that the Kia Soul was offered in a stick. And honestly, I'm a big fan of it. It's so nice and easy to drive and yet I'm still shifting my own gears. I haven't given up on my youth quite yet. Last but not least, of course, the Kia Soul is front wheel drive. So that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, this is where its base modelness really starts to show. In front of me, I have a couple of gauges. On the left is a tachometer. In the center is my speedometer, as well as a small digital readout giving me my range and outside temperature and odometer. And then on the right, I have my coolant temperature and my fuel. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volumes and skip track, as well as mode buttons and my phone options. And off to the right, I have my trip odometers and my mode. So I can put the car into comfort, normal, or sport, which is very interesting for a manual transmission vehicle and let alone just a Kia Soul. Off to the left, I do have this speaker that kind of comes up out of the dash, kind of interesting. Climate control vent, and I have my gauge dimmer switch and traction control button. Moving out of the door, I have my power mirror adjustments as well as power locks, child locks, and my power windows. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and my hazard switch. And then I have a very small rental car radio. It only shows me one color and it is strictly for finding the radio station. And that's it. Of course, I can set a clock and things like that, but you're not gonna be doing much with this. Down below that, I do have my tune and power buttons as well as seek track and my favorite switches and my categories and folders of which Kia and Hyundai has always abbreviated to cat. So you have a button that says cat folder. That's where you put your cats if you don't know where to put them. <coughs> then we have our climate controls. Again, very basic here. I do a fan speed off to the left, where to send it in the center and temperature off to the right. Moving further down the center stack, we have two 12 volt outlets, an aux in and a USB in, and then the shifter itself. Now the shifter is cheap. It looks very cheap. It feels very cheap. It is cheap. However, this could theoretically be swapped out and it does the job. The Kia Soul isn't really supposed to be anything luxurious. So to see the parts bin shifter here feels pretty normal. Moving past that, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Kia Soul 2015. And unfortunately it fails. It starts to accept the bottle, but then gives up halfway. So. Unfortunately, I cannot pass the big friggin' bottle test here in the manual Kia Soul. <laughs> then I do get some extra cubbies in the handbrake, and then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are rather basic. They're a little bit stiff. However, it's to, again, to be expected out of the Kia Soul like this. 
this is a basic form of transportation. And so the seats are, by all means of the definition, seats, but not much more than that. Speaking of seats, however, how many times can I say seats before you guys turn this video off? Seats, 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 seats. Let's go do some back seats reviews. All right, so we're in the back of the 2015 Kia Soul Manual. And uh, actually, the space back here is fantastic. I actually rode in the back seat of one of these from Las Vegas to Los Angeles four years ago in that car that I reviewed that the footage corrupted and you never saw. And so I can honestly tell you from firsthand experience, it's not bad back here. The seats are a little hard. They get a little uncomfortable right as you start to enter the Los Angeles County area. So three hours, three and a half hours is kind of your max um, for sitting back here. Very, very hard seats. However, very basic. Knee room, fantastic. My knees don't have a prayer of hitting the seat in front of me. Headroom, great. This is a car, again, like I've been saying and I'll continue to say, it's a car meant for people. It works for people. It's the size and shape for people. So getting in and out of this is fantastically easy and I really, really enjoy that. Let's go hop around back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so around the back of the Kia Soul, first of all, obviously this hazard line is not original to the Kia Soul. The owner of this vehicle, Jason, actually drives semis, and sometimes they need help with oversized load cars, things like that, so that's what that is for. But come down here, it's a little low for the hatch. Not a big fan of that, but once we are back here, we do get a little light, some little cubbies, things like that, and you can lift this up and you have some tools and whatnot. Overall, not crazy amount of space, but these seats do go down. Obviously, you could just flip that there, flip that there, fold it down, and you have plenty of, plenty of space here in a Kia Soul. I've actually gone to a, a drive-in movie where we reclined these a little bit, watched actually Incredibles 2 out the back, and it was pretty comfortable. But other than that, pretty basic rear trunk area, but I like it a lot. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I, here's the thing. I love the look of the Kia Soul. I really like it. I have grown up around Kia Souls. I have a very close, close friend of mine who drives a Kia Soul, so I've driven them a fair amount, fair amount of distance. And you know what? I don't think the Kia Soul really deserves all the hate that it gets. Everyone's like, oh, it's the ugliest car. It's the new PT Cruiser. No, no, it's not. Is it the most handsome, pretty vehicle in the world? No, but this is a car that works for human beings. It sits up high and has awkward proportions because human beings have awkward proportions. However, driving this car, it feels very ergonomic. It feels natural. It has good visibility. The seating position is up high enough to be comfortable, but not high enough to lock eyes with the lifted Chevy Silverado next to you. It's not that tall. But it's, it's up there, it's not on the ground, it's easy to get in and out of, easy to see out of. It works very functionally as a car, and that's sort of the beauty of this Kia Soul. Yes, things in here are very, very basic. Very basic. Uh, very, uh, very much, yes, basic, okay. However, I'm tired of people expecting the world out of every single car. We need basic transportation. We need cars that we can just get in and drive. And if you want something with a stick shift, this is something you can just get in and drive. This car works. The 1.6 liters from what I've seen seem to be relatively reliable as long as you treat them well. Much like a Tamagotchi, you have to give them a little bit of attention and they'll be fine. And so I wanna start the anti-hate Kia Soul Club because I really don't think that these things deserve all of the hatred that is given to these. It's a car, it works, it functions. And honestly, it's not that ugly. I like this thing. I like it probably more than I should as a car reviewer, but I don't care. It's a Kia Soul, it's got a stick shift. What did you do today anyway? Huge thank you to Jason for letting me take out his manual stick shift Kia Soul. This thing is really, really cool to me. It's very eye-opening and I'm glad I was able to not only experience a stick shift in a Kia Soul, but I finally got to release a Southern California Kia Soul review. I have redeemed myself four years in the making. That's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video. Comment on the video. Subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.